Today I'm taking a look at Quarry Park in Rocky Hill, Connecticut. It's an abandoned stone quarry that's now a state park. The quarry opened in 1901 as the Rocky Hill Stone Company and what you see before you is the quarry. It's completely overgrown though, of course. And in this picture you can see the arrow pointing to roughly where I think I'm standing right now. Now while most of the debris from the old quarry has been cleaned up, there is a section down on the lower level which still has remnants of the old buildings. And this is the main reason I wanted to come out here. Now here's a picture of it back in about 1901. And you can see the railroad there on the left and the rock crusher there on the right. We're actually coming at it from the opposite direction to the photo, so everything's in reverse. Now I can't really tell what a lot of this stuff is other than obviously it's foundations and supports for old structures but beyond that I'm really not sure what I'm looking at here for the most part. Now this quarry was in operation from again 1901 until it closed in I believe 1957. After that the town had a garage for public works vehicles here uh, but that burned down in 1964. And then after that, as far as I can tell, from the mid-60s until looks like the late 80s, early 90s, it was pretty much just completely abandoned. And then in around 1991, uh, the town of uh, Rocky Hill ended up buying the property and turning it into a state park. I have no idea what this equipment is here, but uh, there's a couple of these scattered throughout the uh, quarry. So now let's just take a look around and see what we can find. It's hard to tell what was up here. I'm assuming there was a lot of metal, metal tanks, various structures, which I'm sure were recycled or sold for scrap. So most of what remains is just the concrete and things that I assume were just too hard to take. I'm not sure what this is here. It's definitely some sort of machine. I don't know if this was a rock crusher or what, but it definitely looks uh, like something you wouldn't want to stick your hands in when it was running. This is the remains of the crusher. Uh, the crusher would have crushed rocks, as the name suggests, and it would have been on top of these arches here. You'll see it in a picture coming up right about now. And I have the arrow pointing towards the arches that we're looking at. 
From what it looks like in the photos, I believe trucks and also trains sometimes would pull up underneath the crusher and get loaded up with the stone. Now to the right is what used to be the Connecticut Valley Railroad. It's currently the Providence Worcester Railroad. And I'm assuming the trains would pull up right about here as well and they could also get loaded up with stone. Now in this photo here you can see an old tank of some sort and I'm pretty sure that tank is like this one here that's fallen down with the uh, cat on it. Not sure what it held, I would assume it would have been a gas of some sort, oil, gasoline, not sure. I think all you 80s kids out there will recognize that as uh, Lion O from Thundercats. Some pretty nice art right there. You can see an old uh, utility pole up there. Pretty sure that hasn't been used since probably the 60s. Now that building there is the compressor house and in this photo here from the 1930s you can see the arrow pointing at the compressor house it's the only structure at the quarry that's still mostly intact now in photos I've seen online from just a few years ago this place used to be almost completely empty and you could walk inside it today it's completely full as you can see with junk I'm assuming this was all collected around the quarry there's probably some treasures buried in there, but I wouldn't recommend digging for it without some heavy gloves or you're going to need a tetanus shot. And somehow there's a shopping cart in there. I'm pretty sure that wasn't part of the original uh, stone company. Now, as the name suggests, this held the air compressor that they used for the drills. 
starting in, I think, the late 1920s to 1930s. Before that, everything was steam powered. Now, if anybody has an electric bike pump, that's essentially an air compressor, and you probably know how loud those are. They're tiny. Now, imagine an air compressor hundreds of times that size, and imagine how loud it would be. It would be deafening, I'm sure. Now I came back about a month later because I noticed I had missed a few things the first time around. I found this photo online after the first filming and I wanted to come back and try to line it up as close as possible and I think this is the best I could do. Um, I wanted to get back further but it's completely overgrown. And I noticed in the photo it also showed railroad tracks going underneath the crusher and as I was walking through here I noticed railroad ties which I hadn't seen the first time because they were covered in snow. Now I decided to jump down onto the main tracks here to see what uh, the place looked like from this perspective. And these tracks here apparently are still active from what I can tell but they're uh, very poorly maintained. I can't imagine a train could get through here going more than a few miles an hour without derailing. A hiker there uh, said hi to me. You couldn't hear it on the camera, and I was just saying hi back. I didn't see her there at all, so it was uh, kind of surprising and awkward for me at that point. Not sure what this structure is right here. It doesn't seem to really go anywhere. So I don't know if they uh, kept equipment in here or what. But um, yeah, I just I don't really know what that is. If anybody knows, uh, let me know. This is what people seem to call the cave online. Uh, nobody seems to be able to give a a good answer as to exactly what this is. And I tried to get up to it from this point here, uh, but there was, you know, a little bit of snow on the ground, and it's a lot steeper than it looks in the video here. Um, I probably could have gone up on all fours, but I didn't really feel like doing that. Uh, and this right here is a steel cable, which I'm pretty sure was somehow uh, related to the cave, or what was in the cave, as we'll see in a little bit. So I looked around, and I did find another way up. And so here we are. Again, this is pretty high up. I'm guessing it's at least 15 feet off the ground. So if you're unsteady on your feet, I would not recommend going up here. Especially when there's snow on the ground. So you see that metal pole there? I'm guessing that might have been a cable guide of some sort for that, that metal um, cable that was on the ground there. I'm almost thinking it was something like this, like the Disneyland Skyway, where the cable would go in one side and come out the other. That's a total guess on my part, but it seems to make some sort of logical sense. And see in here, um, 
on the ground, there's that concrete slab there. I'm guessing there might have been a, um, a motor or an engine of some sort on that that would have powered or pulled the cable. Now on the roof here, there are remnants of uh, wooden beams, but they're all black. They look burned to me. I don't think they're covered in tar. That was one guess of mine, but um, some of them look burned as if there were a fire in here at one point. And there's some of the burned wood I'm talking about. I'm 90% I'm sure that's burned. And there's some more burned wood. And there you have it. That is Quarry Park in Rocky Hill, Connecticut. I hope you found it interesting. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up, please. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already done so. It definitely gives me a reason to make more videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.